Welcome to Mail Time, Suresh Venkat. Today we are at the corporate offices of Westlife Food World, who owns and operates the McDonald's franchise in Western South India. The global QSR brand will mark its 27th year in the country and has started the year with new products and new campaigns. To know more, we are in conversation with Arvind RP, the Senior Director of Marketing and Communications at McDonald's India, Western South. What's cooking in the McDonald's India kitchen? Let's find out as we get ready to melt with Arvind RP. Arvind, 2023 marks 27 years of McDonald's in India. India has changed quite a bit in those 27 years. So what does the brand symbolize in today's India? You're right, uh, Suresh. Uh, the brand has evolved quite a bit. And we would like to think along with the Indian consumer. Uh, the first store opened right in 1996 at Bandra. And today we have over 330 stores across uh, Western South. Uh, but one thing hasn't changed, Suresh, right? Uh, the brand is always about creating memories. Be it your birthday, celebrating your birthday at a McDonald's, celebrating your promotion over a cup of coffee, uh, or, you know, a treat to your family. Uh, when you talk to consumers, that's one thing that you get always. There are special me memories at McDonald's, new memories being created every day. Uh, and that's something that our feel-good marketing, uh, which is the way we do marketing at McDonald's, double downs on, creating more new memories for consumers. Fast forward 27 years, we are an omni-channel brand, what we call ourselves as an anytime, anywhere brand. Uh, be it at a breakfast, over a cup of coffee, uh, be it a drive through from Mumbai to Pune, uh, or be it calling over delivery, right? Calling your meals over delivery, be it at an office or at home. Uh, so the brand has evolved significantly since then. Newer channels, newer occasions. Uh, digital plays a big role uh, in our business. Uh, so there are many ways the brands have changed. Uh, but some ways the brand has remained what it always is, uh, creating memories for consumers. And is McDonald's India positioning any different from McDonald's positioning elsewhere in the world? Our uh, approaches are largely similar. Uh, we are completely aligned on the overall approach. Uh, even globally or in India, we see ourselves as uh, three distinct occasions or opportunities. The burger opportunities, the chicken opportunity and the coffee opportunity. We have set ourselves the agenda that we want to be the leader, leadership brand in all of these occasions. While burger no doubt is a core of McDonald's, chicken and coffee are the newer categories that we want to own over a period of time. Does that mean you're going to start competing with Starbucks very soon if you're in the coffee space as well and the other coffee chains? Of course, as a brand, we are very different uh, to Starbucks. Uh, but uh, I think between us, we have the task of growing the out-of-home coffee consumption in India, which is quite nascent to compare to the, some of the other countries out there. We have a long way to go. It's a big opportunity. Uh, I think uh, more brands that participate in this occasion, the faster will this occasion grow. And it's great for all of us. And over the last 27 years, has your customer demographic also changed? What is the demographic like today? I would say at the core, uh, the brand is all about families, right? Being relevant to family as a unit, uh, which is an aggregated unit, or even as a disaggregated unit, right? The youngster in the family when he goes out with the friends, or the young son when they are, he's celebrating his birthday, or the family is going as a unit uh, for shopping. Uh, at its heart, McDonald's is a family brand, relevant across occasions. Uh, but having said that, uh, we are we are having a coffee, for example, which is relevant to the young professionals when they're going out as a group. Uh, we are very strong on snacking, which students, for example, prefer after they call, finish their college. Uh, at the heart, the brand is uh, centered around families. You know, you want to be an anywhere, anytime, anything brand. But most Indians consider burgers and many of the offerings at McDonald's as snacks and not as meals. Have you managed to convince the Indian consumer that the burger is a meal? Well, it's a journey, Suresh, right? Uh, but uh, I'm very happy to say that we have come a, come a long way in that journey. Let's say a consumer you know, looks at us from a burger perspective or for that matter, chicken perspective. We launched uh, fried chicken about uh, three years back uh, in several markets in South. Uh, that's a completely new opportunity for us. Uh, it's been more than a decade since we have had coffee. Uh, so we have grown our relevance as far as the meal occasion is concerned. One of the biggest 
uh, menu innovations for us that has helped this meal transformation is a gourmet range of burgers. Um, and especially post pandemic, it was very clear to us that meals occasion is going to be the largest occasion. Uh, and also the omnichannel occasion, not just in store, but also on delivery. Uh, and what consumer wanted was indulgent filling burgers. And that's the gourmet range of burgers, which we launched about two years back. Has been doing very well since launch. Uh, on the back of several menu led innovations, uh, we have led this transformation from a snacking brand to a meal brand. And that explains the several quarters of outstanding performance that we have delivered. Arvind, I'm a McDonald's consumer. Great. I go there for fast, efficient food. Why would I go there for a gourmet meal? Well, uh, in our minds, when we conceptualize the gourmet meal, uh, it was about indulgence, right? Uh, many times, uh, food is incidental to the catch up people have mm. with uh, you know everyone else. But sometimes it's not the case. People want something different, something indulgent, something that's filling, right? Uh, and that was a gap in our portfolio for this range of indulgent filling burgers. Uh, and that's when uh, we have a team of chefs uh, who kind of conceptualize this range. So it's called the chef special gourmet range of burgers. And I think the ultimate validation comes from consumers, right? Uh, whether this innovation is a success or not, or a, sometimes innovation can be a middling success. But in this case, it kind of changed the trajectory of the brand. Uh, positioned the brand at while well, it sold very well, but I think it helped in positioning the brand as an indulgent filling brand uh, from where it was. So will I one day be going to McDonald's fine dining restaurant then? Oh, well, McDonald's restaurants has its own uh, transformational journey, right? Uh, for example, uh, talking about the restaurant transformation, right? Over twenty seven years, uh, the restaurant has changed a lot. Today it's far more digital. There are digital kiosks where you can order by yourself which is what today's Gen Z cons consumer wants, right? Mm -hmm. He or she doesn't want to stand in a line, for example, right? And especially in the peak Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Nobody wants to stand yeah, in line. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday. So here they go to a kiosk, they order their own meal um, and uh, they customize their own meal. Um, and that's what we call as the experience of the future, where uh, our guest experience leaders deliver the food to your table. Um, so, so that experience uh, and the transformation of that experience uh, I would say has really helped us a lot over the past uh, 27 years and uh, you know that kind of complements the menu innovation journey in many ways. Uh, so consumer is coming to a much modern and relevant destination today. Let's talk about some numbers Arvind. McDonald's in India has about 450 plus stores across the country. Your franchisee runs about 337 of those stores. For comparison, McDonald's in the US has 13,438 outlets for a population of what, 360 million, and we are 1.2 billion. Does this mean that India has tremendous headroom to grow or that you've been very, very cautious the last 27 years? Definitely, Suresh, there's a huge opportunity in India. I think uh, Westlife Food World, which is the franchisee that manages uh, West and South, we have been very aggressive in store counts. We have an aggressive plan of 300 stores over the next five years on the back of 330 stores that we have today. So we are planning for significant expansion in terms of number of stores. India presents a very large opportunity, no doubt a complex opportunity because uh, the menu is very different in India. Uh, and like you know, we have many products that are unique to the Indian market. Uh, so it presents a complex opportunity, but a very large opportunity. Uh, I think we are very confident that on the back of our new strategy, of meals, omnichannel meal strategy, and on the back of all of these innovations that I talked about, uh, you know, the market will only grow. Arvind, you recently launched a new product called the Chicken Big Mac Burger. And alongside that, you also have Virender Sehwag as the brand ambassador. Why choose Virender Sehwag to be the brand ambassador for this particular product? One is, there are very few uh, sports personality who fit the brand in that sense. He's a very quirky, very chirpy, very effervescent kind of a personality, exact, exactly fits. Viru is like that. Viru is like that, right? And his online personality is exactly like that. For example, the brand is that, right? Fun, effervescent, and so on and so forth. Uh, and he's an icon in his own right. Tremendous records over, uh, over decades. And the thought behind this campaign was uh, Chicken Big Mac is so iconic that other icons pale into insignificance. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we needed a larger than life personality uh, to kind of demonstrate this uh, thought. 
uh, and Viru, for the reasons I explained, was a natural fit. Uh, and does this chicken Big Mac replace the Maharaja Mac? Won't consumers get confused if you have two chicken big products in the same sort of genre? No doubt, uh, Maharaja Mac, chicken and veg have built their own cult following over the years. But for the consumers, those consumers, they also crave a change once in a while. Uh, and here is Chicken Big Mac. Currently, it's conceived as a limited time offering. So it's there in the market for three months uh, as an option to these consumers for short term excitement. Uh, so I would say the consumers welcome it uh, for, you know, something different, something new, something global, uh, bringing global flavors to the Indian consumer. What is Mick Cafe and how does that fit into your brand strategy? Uh, McCafe is a huge opportunity for us. Uh, it's been more than a decade that we have put this. A lot of work went into uh, putting up McCafe. Uh, you know, conceptualizing the right kind of coffee that will suit the palate of the Indian consumer. Uh, while India is known as a tea drinking nation, uh, there are regions where coffee is very, very popular. Uh, and we wanted to appeal to everyone. We have more than uh, 270 stores uh, which have McCafe today. Each barista goes through more than 100 hours of training mm -hmm. um, to kind of craft. So ours are handcrafted uh, coffees. So they make the coffee in front of you and uh, you know completely 100% Arabica. Uh, so which again suits the palate of the Indian consumer. Uh, so that's what the thought behind that's gone, gone behind my cafe. But having said that, the way McCafe adds incrementally to the business is by bringing in completely new occasions. Uh, the breakfast occasion, for example, becomes much stronger with the addition of great quality coffee. Uh, McCafe is not just about coffee. It has also got uh, fantastic shakes, which is a great accompaniment in your late night uh, dinner, for example. So McCafe adds to the occasions in more ways than one. Uh, and this is early days for McCafe. Uh, the brand started off, uh, started off as focusing on burgers uh, and now we have chicken and now uh, McCafe. I would say the next decade belongs to McCafe. Uh, the way we are going to market and we aim to be leaders in the coffee, uh, coffee occasion. By volume, we are already leaders uh, and that's the ambition for McCafe to chart out the next growth story for McDonald's. Sarvind, uh, let's map out all your competition. Who really is your competition? Is it other quick service restaurants? Is it Starbucks and the artisanal coffee chains? Is it eating at home? Is it street food? Is it fine dine? Is it all of the above? Right. We get that question often, uh, Suresh. And uh, I would say, uh, given the category nomenclature of Western fast food, no doubt the uh, American brands and the Western brands are what come to mind when you think of McDonald's. Uh, but when you, look, when you look at the larger opportunity in India, it's largely an unorganized sector today. Uh, but the organized sector, though it's very small, is growing very, very fast. Uh, and that's going to be the th trend. And I would say that's the opportunity for the brand. Uh, how to ride the trend, the growth of the organized sector, uh, since we are market leaders, how to kind of make sure that the growth rate is faster. So in a sense, it's also about category creation, uh, category creation of organized retail, uh, organized QSR. Uh, and uh, that's what is the larger opportunity if I look at from a 10 or 20 year perspective. Consumers have got many options today, uh, dine-in or for that matter in delivery. Uh, our aim is to capture the, uh, the, the, that large growth opportunity uh, and make sure we are growing faster than the market. This move towards healthy eating and health food, does that impact you adversely? It's a very important trend uh, and we recognize that thankfully more than a decade back. And it's a big trend today. I would say it was sometime in 2016 that we launched our good food journey. Uh, and in the good food journey, we kind of uh, improved upon our menu in more ways than one. For example, we reduced sodium content by more than 20% on our fries. Uh, many of our products are without preservatives, additives and so on and so forth. But I would say the biggest change uh, was our introduction of the whole wheat bun, uh, which we did about five years back. There are innovations that are, you know, niche, there are innovations that are mainstream. Whole wheat bun in our case was a mainstream innovation. Uh, today, more than 40% of the burgers consume are consumed with whole wheat bun. 
uh, our alu tikki, mekalu tikki, which is an iconic product crafted for India, is actually a balanced meal as per as per NIN guidelines. While uh, you and me can talk about it, it's very important consumers know about it. So it forms a very important part of our marketing story, uh, which is a improving our menu and talking about it to our consumers, reassuring them that uh, mindful indulgence, as we call it, uh, is something that we know is a big trend and we're taking care of it. Obviously, this is a journey, more needs to be done, but, but uh, we are on top of that trend. Let's talk about the advertising part of your job. What is your digital strategy for McDonald's? Well, I would say since the past uh, five years, uh, digital has emerged as one of the most important medium. Um, while uh, from a brand advertising perspective, maybe a decade back, it was largely TV. Uh, today, it's TV plus digital. Uh, that forms the bedrock of our brand advertising. Uh, but for, we, we also do a lot of performance marketing because uh, of our delivery business. We have our own app, Make Delivery, uh, and we put a lot of marketing dollars behind it. Again, digital powers that performance marketing. What percentage of your spend goes on digital? Uh, easily about 60%. Uh, 60% of the consumer facing spends are digital uh, and through the funnel digital marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a very large tech team who works on the digital stack. Uh, CRM is something that kind of propels our business also, apart from uh, these uh, digital solutions that we talked about. So digital is the bedrock of what we do uh, at McDonald's and to such an extent that even the consumer experience at the store is digital led. Do you use both digital, both for brand and for tactical or is it largely a tactical sort of uh, Across, foray? For brand and digital uh, and tactical. Some of our campaigns, for example, Equal are digital led. Uh, truly Indian burger, completely digital led. Uh, and of course, there are campaigns that are both TV and digital led. Uh, so, so over the past two years, uh, I would say at least 30% of campaigns are completely digital led. Um, and also, we have a complex geography where the menu or rather what is liked by consumers differs from state to state. Mm -hmm. uh, and digital offers a ready-made solution to target that particular menu offering to those states. And we tend to do that. And we're able to do this sort of hyper personalization Absolutely. by state or by region. Absolutely. For example, we all know Gujarat is a veg oriented market, right? Uh, and in contrast, let's say Hyderabad is a very chicken oriented market. Uh, and let's say we take our iconic burger, Mix Spicy, right? I'm able to do Mix Spicy chicken campaign in Hyderabad and a Mix Spicy paneer campaign for a Gujarat. And uh, there's no other medium but, to, but digital which helps me kind of do this. You know, many campaigns quite often devolve into what's called decision by committee, right? The least offensive idea in the room wins, but usually that's not the most creative idea. So when you work with your agencies, how do you sort of guard against this trend of this decision by committee? Decision by committee, I would say, makes for average advertising, right? Uh, if not downright poor, boring advertising, yeah. poor advertising. Uh, the only way to guard ag against it uh, is, I would say, uh, each stakeholder knows what he or she brings to the table or the role each one brings to the table. I think from a business perspective, uh, we are very just laser sharp focused on outcomes, right? Uh, and is the campaign centered around the strategy, right? As long as the campaign is delivering on the strategy, right? Then the creative call is a functional call, right? Uh, there are category leads, there's a marketing lead who are completely responsible for the creative call working with the agency. Uh, the only lens is, is it on our strategy? Is it on the business strategy? If that is the case, then uh, you know it's good to go. And we hold account them out accountable for business outcomes. This as long as it's aligned with business strategy, the creative calls you're leaving to the individual. Absolutely, strategy. absolutely. And, and uh, there are also various ways we measure creative effectiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, McDonald's as a system has got many ways uh, some are India systems, some are global systems to measure uh, this creative effectiveness and we do it on a monthly basis. Uh, uh, there's a creative effectiveness scale that we have. Uh, as long as it scores high on the creative effectiveness scale, uh, the team is good. Uh, and uh, we make sure that, uh, you know, fewer people are there who are taking calls on creatives, making for very engaging advertising. Arvind, you have a significant delivery business of your own. But the delivery market is clearly dominated by the duopoly of Swiggy and Zomato, who charge you a pretty penny for their services. Right? A lot of restaurants, a lot of people have complained about the kind of margins charged by these delivery partners. 
Do you think the arrival of ONDC is going to change the game for you and for players like Swiggy and Zomato? Potentially, yes. Uh, I think every e-commerce player needs to watch out for ONDC and the impact on the overall ecos ecosystem. Uh, I think ONDC's impact could start with some other categories, uh, mainstream e-commerce e categories first and then potentially come into the food delivery business. Uh, but that remains to be seen. We are keeping a close eye on it and uh, we will be uh, exploring uh, collaborations as far as the ONDC's pilot goes. Uh, but what Swiggy and Zomato, full credit to them, have done is created the whole delivery business out mm -hmm. of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, we can see that it's, it's almost close to, I would say, five, eight years where uh, consumers, because of the convenient option, prefer delivery. Uh, and these two businesses, Swiggy and Zomato, have created this business right from scratch. Um, we have got our own app, Make Delivery. Uh, while we work very closely with Swiggy and Zomato, we felt it's very important to have our own D2C uh, and, uh, and uh, Make Delivery app, which is again five, seven years old, uh, has its lion's share of our delivery business. So that's how we kind of make sure that we are multi-channel even as far as delivery goes. All right, Edwin, let's end this interview on a personal note. Do you cook? Oh, yes. What do you cook? Omelettes, uh, fried egg. I do that for my son every Sunday uh, and for myself too. You know, many parents uh, allow their kids to eat McDonald's as a special treat. How often do you allow your kids to eat McDonald's? Well, I think it's not a question of allow. Uh, you, know, you need my... to restrain them. <laughs> my son, uh, he's a teen uh, and he's got his weekly uh, favorite and uh, that's what he demands and I defer to his demands. <laughs> All right. Arvind, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for having right. me, Suresh. That's a wrap on this episode. You can follow Melt on social media. The handle is ready to melt or simply log on to readytomelt.com. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Sue Wink on Twitter. Till next week, goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs>